time, son. You gotta be strong in this time, son. I'm a survivor. funeral service serve you with dignity and compassion as you mourn. Every day, we embark on the journey of life and one day, the journey will end. It's on that day that you can entrust the celebration of life of your loved ones to David Williams Funeral Service. Call 718-291-3823. Our people understand the value and the benefit of free secondary education because they know now that once their children are able to pass the common entrance exam and get into secondary school they no longer have to worry about finding those fees which as you know for agricultural workers for example were very often impossible but not just free secondary education but in effect free university education Moving from a situation before the revolution, where in the last year of Gary, 1978, just three people went abroad on university scholarships. And they happened to be Gary's daughter and one of his other minister's daughter. <laughs> Moving from that situation, in the first six months of the revolution, 109 students were able to go abroad on free university scholarships. Our people are more and more getting to understand what we mean when we say that education to us is liberation. <laughs> that education is a strategic concern of this government. That is why that this year, 1982, is the year we have named the year of political and academic education because we understand the importance of bringing education to our people. Following the establishment of the Center for Popular Education program in early 1980, within one year of the work of the CPE program, the illiteracy figure in Grenada was reduced to 2% of the entire population. The people understand that in areas, in all areas, 
of their basic needs, real attempts are being made to solve these problems. Two and a half million gallons more of water, pipe bone water, are flowing into the homes of our Grenadians at this time. Before the revolution, under 30% of all homes had portable water. The people understand what it means when electrification is brought to their village. The people understand what it means when they know that by the end, the middle of next year, we would have doubled the electricity output and capacity in our country. And therefore, more people would have the possibility of electricity. You gotta be firm in this time, son. Welcome, one and all, to uh, a very special historical ride along. And as you know, we do this every year. Because I firmly believe, right, that the history of the revolution, the history of Maurice Bishop, the history of Grenada's revolution, foundation of the government of the people, Grenada, and a lot of laws that are, that are implemented even today, pension and, and a whole lot more, are because of the revolution. But a lot of things that we as probably young very babies at the time of the revolution we don't know we don't understand because this information was never taught to us in schools right this information the information of the revolution was not taught to us in school so ask someone in the in the in the early 40s they would tell you fragments of information that they they don't quite understand and can't put it together now over the past two or three years we have tried and tried in many different on many different occasions to get some of these historical icons i call them in grenada's foundation to come on the program and share with us so we could connect the dots so we could understand get a better sense of understanding as to the history of grenada Karikwa Piti Martinik as it relates to the revolution. Today is 38 years, 38 years to date since the brutal massacre on Fort George. But now Fort George, back to Fort George. And as we do every year, we dive deep into the history, right? Now again, I, I was I was signing out with a friend of mine earlier today and i was asking her um she was she was born in 1988 and i was asking her about what she know about the revolution and there was very little that that she knew about it and it's not her fault while we were busy learning about the nina the pina pinta and the santa maria which doesn't really or isn't really a part of our history that very important part was left out so today we decided to come front and center with a history lesson in Grenada Caracu and PT Martinique Mr. Livingston, Livingston Nelson I would say is one of the um, most vocal historian he might not deem himself as a historian but I think he is. He speaks with relevance, and I think he understands that era. He was somehow a part of that era, so he has a broad understanding. So today we invited Mr. Livingston Nelson. He is a wealth of information on the topic, so we could piece some of these pieces, put it together a little bit, so we could understand what actually happened and why today. October 19th is so very significant. Who is Maurice Bishop? What was his usual movement? Right? All of these things we're going to talk about here today. Yeah. But before we speak on Maurice Bishop, the New Jewel movement, Grenada Revolution, and the significance of this date, I want to update everyone on a story that was circulating yesterday right the story was circulating yesterday and um it was the death uh, sorry so why, why am i saying the death it's not the death 
it was the bank robbery in Karaku. I want to bring everyone up to date, up to speed with what happened uh, and an update as to where the investigation is at present. Now, as we learned earlier yesterday, shortly after the incident, the five were ca captured and currently in police custody. Right? Uh, the bank robbers, their names are Akeem John. He's a painter uh, from Tobago. Alan Melville. Uh, he's a vendor in also in Scarborough, Tobago. Keon Dick. He is a fisherman. He's also from Tobago. Uh, Nashan Scotland. He's a mechanic. Um, and those one, two, three, four and uh jabari roach he is uh ac tech from scarborough uh tobago as well so all five of these would-be robbers are confirmed to be from tobago right uh they were caught by the rgpf after they robbed the bank quad bank right there in hillsborough Karakou and try to make out on a speedboat get make the getaway on a speedboat uh they was caught shortly after they currently in police custody so those are the five guys those are the five right uh, again the names are akeem john alan melville kian dick nishan scotland and jabari roach it's five men on the screen bank robbers or would-be bank robbers or wannabe bank robbers from Tobago crazy 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 uh, I don't want to spend much time on on their on their story because I think it's um, we don't want to make them celebrities after doing something so heinous and stupid uh, we don't want to rejoice juvenile delinquency so let's get on with our topic for today and introduce my guest. I call him a historian. He might say differently, Mr. Uh, Livingston Nelson. How are you doing, sir? I'm I'm pretty good, and um, thanks for for having me. Um, but as I rightly say, I am just an avid reader, um, a follower of what is happening. So you know, um, I am not going to take all the aqua lady or try to place two on me, but. <laughs> Nonetheless, we 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 gonna we gonna chat the course. We are gonna talk about what um happened then, and um hopefully I can bring some clarity and um uh other person should be able to chime in and challenge yeah. some of my my thinking, my thoughts, my my pronunciation here. Right, right, right. Well, the one thing I want you to do for me, I know there's a fan that's blowing a little bit, and it's kind of blowing into your microphone. It's affecting okay. the audio quality. All right, good. All right. So let's start. Let's start, Mr. Nelson. We'll start from. We'll start a little bit um the Grenada becoming independence. Right? I don't know if you want to go back that far, but it's good to kind of get from that perspective because it kind of chart the path and make everyone understand a little bit about Grenada and how Grenada went into independence you want to jog from from that from that perspective the role that uh, um, uh, Eric Gary played in Grenada's independence in 1974 well you know something um well first let me say good night to all the listeners um on ride along uh, and, and again I want to say thanks for having me um I didn't really plan to go that far but okay, that's fine us, no no, that... no no let us do it we can do it I will quickly go through it um it is Sometimes we look at it as a sort of irony because there has never been that much movement of resources from one level of the upper class to the poor persons in Grenada as what happened during the Geary era. I mean, undoubtedly, from the 1968 Land Acquisition Act um, to the many building of uh, medical facilities, playing fields, shortage in working hours women were being able to experience working with boots for the first time um increasing pay um increasing pay 
a series of things that transformed the world from one set to the other. And it was not just a couple of estates, it was 30 estates that were acquired and um, lands and resources transferred. Apart from that, um, scholarships to Guyana, um, um, scholarships from primary school to secondary school. So there was a lot of trends for a lot of goodwill, a lot of things happened during the Geary um, era. So there comes from 74, coming right, actually from 68, coming up to independence in 74. In 74, some people had feared because there was the rise of a new movement, a new group of persons, starting with St. David, um, happening in Tivoli with people like in Tivoli, like um, Kenneth Woodlaw, etc., and they forming the, the cooperative movement, forming the night school, which was preceded, which preceded CPE. And people like Teddy Victor and I mean St. David, later on forming um, Jewel with the whole aim of bringing more enlightenment, library, again, similar cooperative into the St. David area, trying to get the people like enlightened and challenge Gary in, in that way. Um, later on in 69, you have a map um, coming into formation and later on you have Mark and, and Joel, I'm uh, moving quickly in 73, um, um, coming together after the whole event in St. David when they blocked the beach to um, the Lasages beach. So I am saying all that to say that that is what was happening. But um, I, I want to then go regionally and then I would come back home. Right. Regionally, what was really happening during that time? You had... Um, movement for independence within the region so not just grenada when we got it in 74 but all the other islands um we got barbados and and jamaica and others that got independence before us but we had st vincent and st Lucia. everybody struggling and independence that time meant that they were looking for some um way to express their their, their identity something different they do not want to be ruled by the crown anymore so and that is what it is what it was all about People trying to get this, this self-identification. Um, so that movement of, of, of independence that took place in the Caribbean. And we moved just for that field to the United States and you had the civil rights movement taking place and the formation of the Black Panther Party. Um, yep. Right, so you had all this activity. But then on the African continent, you had the whole movement for independence, the movement for liberation. And mind you, what was actually happening in South Africa was the struggle um, again against the apartheid system. So not just Grenada, we had all those things coming from us. Again, and I forgot to mention and the, well, the Black Power movement that was very close in Trinidad with people like Stockley, Michael, etc. Um, right. So we, we, we had that right on our doorstep. But what was common among all those persons, all those struggles, was for self-actualization. Mm -hmm. They want to express the culture. They didn't want to be represented by the queen in that kind of way. Um, and again, if you know, go even prior to that, we had a whole movement for Caribbean unity led by, by Mary Show. Now, um, with that in mind, there was a new movement coming out from Europe. And that movement was the Leninist Marxist movement that, that was emerging from, from Europe. And it was now fighting for class against class or so classism but head and head and along with the class something that um later on became extremely confrontational was that of the emergence of the rastafarian movement and reggae and people have always in my mind underplayed the role of rasta and reggae music in particular in radicalizing and lifting the level of consciousness among the blacks in the caribbean but for our special discussion tonight the consciousness of religions right so, let me just say right so you had um so within within that you have no persons like um in st david like teddy victor you had um again um people like kenneth Budlal in tivoli you had other persons that became radicalized and ralphie and you had persons that literally joined even just after independence coming to 78 now so i'm moving quickly Right, yeah. Like free the strand, Philip, and those persons then joining the struggle um, in order to, to, to fight against the forces of Gary. So that was the atmosphere around that time, just prior to 1979. Um, right. 
So, so we, I know we're moving, uh, you know, quickly uh, through the era of independence. But I, I started from there because I, I think that a, a lot of it kind of set the, the premise to the uprising and Gary being there, and a lot of people feeling like he he, he is he is ruling with some kind of iron fist and not giving rise to other political agendas or other political ideas ideologies to take uh, to, to to emerge uh, let's move into the emergence of the jewel movement the new jewel movement the rise of maurice bishop and why did maurice bishop and why why did maurice bishop why was the new jewel movement form and what was the reason for the revolution well, the new Jewel movement, um, the new Jewel movement came into being out of, as I said, that that is sort of collective struggle, and um, and I was telling you all that was happening outside of the the, the, the specialization um, that probably Maurice Bishop brought to the struggle, um, and I, I say that to say that there was this general trust for um, black expression. Um, the general trust for solidarity among um, black people between Africa, the Caribbean, Latin America, um, or America um, itself. So I was saying that there was this general trust. What, um, what Maurice Bishop brought was a level of charisma, a leadership, and with the hope of channeling all those energy. So mind you, while Gary himself had done a, a lot in transferring the resources from an elite group, to the poor, when he was faced with the level of organization and the intelligence um, of those persons that formed in the New Jewel movement, I believe at some time he bottled, at some time he faltered, at some time he became um, oppressive, or sometimes the um, persons get jailed, people were tortured. And, and, in, and, and the, the more he, he reacted to, to, to those forces that challenged his leadership, the more people became enraged, angry, right? But there was something also significant about Gary. Gary was somebody, and, and we cannot be saying that Gary was somebody from the rural community. And, mm -hmm. and Gary won always in the tongue, but he was this person that brought something to the country that probably was hard for people to swallow. Like maybe in America, although Obama was president, it was hard for a lot of persons to swallow this black guy as president. And Gary was indeed an extremely handsome and black man. And there was already opposition because we had some level of racism and classism or colorism in Guinea that was taking place around the time. So Gary was challenged um, and he was challenged on many fronts. So you had the, GD, the GNP challenging him and then you had a new Jewel movement now coming to challenge Gary. So on the heels of the revolution, all those forces come together, 78, um, Bloody Sunday, Bloody Monday, um, in massive demonstration, wanting to unearth and uproot Gary, the Committee of 22, nurses, etc., coming together to form this umbrella organization with the whole intention of trying to uproot every Gary from um, leadership. But there was a general fear that if Gary go into, um, if Gary go into, um, as you know, it's, it's 73, sorry, that's 70. if Gary go into independence, what you would find happening, what you would find happening, that he would become a strong man, a strong arm. That was some of the, the things that were sorted around. Yeah? So right. I'm coming back now to, to 79. So the 79, you had a lot of interest group, persons, um, as I said, from the Tivoli area, the Teddy Victor, the Ralphie, the Strand Philip. Um, there was this guy named Erica trying to, um, the, and of course, the Rastas and the radicalization and the level of consciousness that took place um, with reggae music was extremely powerful in having this force. So Morris and them offer that kind of leadership, a conscious, determined leadership that embraced the struggle and the aspiration of the people. And so that is how people read that struggle. So on, right. March, so on March 13th, when the call was made, when the call was made, what happened? People responded to that call. Um, if we were to go back maybe just a couple of years prior to, you had the formation of a new group um, and, and two major happenings that later on would play itself out in the Grenada Revolution. One was the formation of Orel. And with Orel, 
you, you, there was a cadre of persons that were selected um, to understudy a particular ideology of Leninism, Marxism. Marxism. Um, so you had that group, Orel, and then later on you had a small group. They called the group the, the 12 Apostles. And those persons were then sent to Guyana, named the NLA, that were trained in Guyana in guerrilla warfare, in, 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 in bombs, in small bombs, making, etc. They were trained, and then they came back with the whole intention that if they cannot win by the ballot, they definitely would win by the bullet. And, and, and that is how you found you had this group that was already um, waiting and ready to join with the other forces um, to execute March 13th. Let, let's speak of the rise of the of Maurice Bishop. Uh, we know from history that Maurice Bishop was born in Aruba, mm -hmm. right? A lawyer studied in England. How did Maurice Bishop, be, be, how did he become the uh, leader of the New Jewel Movement and who, what was the construct of that New Jewel Movement with he being the leader? Well, see, Maurice Bishop was, I mean, as I said, a trade lawyer. And when he, he came back from studies, he immediately they organized um, MAP. Um, so MAP, because he was a lawyer, he had a level of prestige. Apart from that, he was a well-spoken person. So you had a, he, Maurice Bishop with Unison Whiteman, but you also had Unison Whiteman with Teddy Victor in the St. David movement. Um, so when the whole movement started um, the rebellion against Broglo in Lassages, Maurice came to help represent um, the New Jewel movement and to offer legal advice. And in the process, because of the role he played and the opposition, he, the, the, the way he was able to articulate his position, he was given joint, <laughs> I know that's what it is, joint leadership of mm -hmm. that movement together with you, this white man. So Morris then um, starts spearheading that movement from day one. Later on, he was joined by his, um, his, 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 his colleague, friend at all the time, um, Bernard Code. But remember, Morris had studied, um, was a member in, um, of, of the of the Communist Party, um, he studied Marxism Leninism, and he was an average student. So when he came, that was the preferred line, that was the preferred teaching. But I also believe, and I, I would differ from a lot of persons, that Maurice was also a more pragma pragmatic person. While he studied Leninism, Marxism, I don't believe I don't believe that he intended to hold to to sell that wholesale on the Grenadian populace. Um, but the, the, the faction that, that arise that was responsible for the, the, the discipline and the teaching and the strategy, um, later on, they developed oral. And with this group of oral, mind you, at 79, those group of oral really come full circle with the intention to lead that revolution, not lead the actual execution of the revolution, but to claim after the fighting, after the major so-called warriors fought, uh, they, they, they came in and, and, and put that ice in, took control of all the, a lot of the sensitive areas. Um, in that regard, a lot of the persons that were key fighters, they were relegated or marginalized to other positions, or less um, strategic positions. So Orel emerged, or the grouping that was so-called Orel emerged immediately after the revolution. But it was always seen that the person that connects in terms of his, his, his repertoire, in terms of his delivery, was Maurice Bishop. So from very early o'clock, Maurice Bishop was loved and embraced by the Grenadian people as um, even before 70, even before 79, even before, as a sort of hero. Right. Something that speak the language of, of the oppressed, of the underclass. Let's talk about, let's talk about the Mongols gang, because mm -hmm. uh, let's transition a little bit into the the day itself that the 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 the, the, the infrastructure the regime uh, the the revo the revolution it's the day that it started and the takeover um the mongols gang first why when we look and hear about the mongols gang 
it's like it's a group of police officers that or a group of officers or people who go wrong and beat up people but the opposition and when gary supporters would speak about the mongoose gang they say no there was just men who was just set up to go and kill mongoose it wasn't what 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 it's made out to be what was the mongoose gang and what was the purpose of gary instilling the mongoose gang well um what well, side both sides <laughs> side are right in the first place, the Mongols gang was this group of guys that were um, they, they were um, recruited to actually help in the Mongols eradication project. Um, at that time, it was seen that it was a real menace in Grenada. So they were going around. And I don't know if it was deliberate that they were, hand, they were handpicked for the, 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 the strength, the, the stubbornness, the warrior-like nature. Um, but anyway, they later on became the unofficial bodyguard. Um, unofficial bodyguard to, to Sir Gary. Anyway, he went. They went there. Um, and when one or two persons decided they were giving trouble, the Mongols gang came out and um, kind of tried to discipline that person in the, in the way they know. Uh, maybe by giving you a two, a two battle. Um, they chased you down. They had... They, at one time they had no guns, no, no, no guns, and later on they were seen to be talking around with, with, with some arms. There was always this conflict though for you know going around um, there was always this conflict between the, 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 the police, because some police did not approve of the Mongols gang and some high-ranking officers never approved of the Mongols gang. For for a matter of fact, um during the Gary era and because of that, several um commissioner police Police commissioners were, 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 were changed, the police chief were changed um, because they did not always support the power that the Mongols gang exerted. But they became a real, um, they became a terror um, on, you know, they, they exerted terror onto the populace and they, they, they went around the duty, um, well, I would say, torturing or beating persons that they, they, they thought was opposing to Eric Gary. Even young persons that was going around doing the, the, the regular shows that they had to know, had nothing to do with them, with politics. Young kids, they meet in the evening. So they were a sort of um, group that was never yeah, kept in check. And one might say Gary, at, at some time, you know, one might say that Gary was not fully aware of all the, the, the duties, the responsibilities, the behavior. Mm -hmm. But they formed a real protective um, clothing coat around around Gary, um, and I, I think for one reason or the other they were welcome. So when um, they had the um, the was it the bloody bloody Monday when mm -hmm. they had the bloody Monday, um, they were called out, and Gary said he you know he calling out his roughest, toughest, rough deck in town to come and help straighten the situation. Yeah, so that, was, that was the Mongols gang. Yeah, guys, we were talking here about Grenada the Revolution, and we kind of moving into so you have a kind of uh, chronological perspective of how things happen, right? Uh, and we have, of course, Livingston Nelson here with us, and we're gonna open up the phone line. So if you guys have any questions that you want to add or ask, you could do that. The number I'll put on the screen right now, so you could call in. Doug, how are you doing, sir? Um, the number that you could call in um, is seven one eight seven zero one five seven two zero. Right. Um, let's move into the era, the time, the day of the overthrow. Right. Um, conveniently, a lot would a lot of people would say that it it happened and there was almost no debt. It was it was a, like a bloodless coup. Tell us about the idea and who was involved in the takeover that that day itself how did it how did it ha happen well as i said there were a group of persons that went to um to guide and train some people like Ewat lane um would be one of those but you had um sean philip who um was a, a trained soldier from overseas and he led that attack on the tribal barrack um while the leadership meaning bernard code and morris stayed on a hill close by and observe it is widely believed that um the intelligence of the ngm had infiltrated and had persons on the inside that helped 
so it was the, 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 the timing, the strategy and everything, well, it was properly planned and they got help from inside. So this, the, 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 the men at True Blue was cut at a time when they was or is it, totally off guard, you know, totally off guard and they had very little time to, to react. So while this was, um, the attack was going on in Chublu, the Chublu barrack, um, there were other areas, other mopping up that took place at the other country, at the other side. Um, and yeah, who was Gary at that time? And why was he not on the island? I think, I, I, not, I, I can't, um, I'm not so sure exactly. But I think Gary was in America at that time. He had went to attend a, a meeting. So he right. was there. I don't know if it was in the United Nations. I, right. I also believe. I think he was in the United Nations. He was presenting something, and he had to do a little with UFO. Um, but at that time, he was told that there was a coup in Grenada. So um, when you listen to some persons that had inside knowledge, the date was shifted or changed um, in order to know that Gary was had had left the island. It was brought forward. So to catch Gary out. And to and again, as I said, there was some inside information um, that somebody from the inside um, was actually working with persons from the NGM, and they helped expedite that process. So the men at Chubul Barracks had no chance to to get armed, and I, and in the process there was little or no bloodshed. I think there was only one, some named Brizan, that got that got shot sometime on that on that fateful morning. Yeah. Uh, some people would say that, of course, the planning, it was a very strategic planning, the day, um, the minute, the hour. A lot of people also put emphasis on Kennedy Boudlal and the folks in Tivoli and the role that they played in taking over a few of the police stations, right? Um, Kennedy Boudlal who i uh, been on the program he spoke to us before um what role did he play in the in on on that particular day um let, let me let, let me start <clears throat> people like um i would come to kennedy people like teddy victor had although he was all of grace with the revolution and the way they were going by that time and for matter of fact he was out of grace mainly with bernard code and the influence of bernard code in the party um, he led the St. David's troop. Kennedy Boudla led the troop that, um, the team, mainly the Tivoli. For a matter of fact, the Tivoli had a contingent that it was stated that match any other paramilitary group in the island during that time. Um, it is believed that all the guns that were then um, stolen from, from PBC ended up in Tivoli. So, and not only that, a lot of the so-called mission prior to 79 for the execution or plan assassination of, um, of, of, of Eric Gim, um, it, it was led by most of the men from Tivoli. Mm -hmm. So although the NLA, the guys from the NLA were trained, they rely heavily on the firepower and um, or the militarization of the guys from Tivoli. So um, the airport, was a politician in Tivoli, Montrose, Hermitage, um, James Harry had joined in with Tivoli from Sotes and they went to take over the Sotes police station. Um, the last station to fall on that day, that station was in Guam. And it was the guys in Tivoli that left Tivoli to went to ensure. And when they went there and the men from Guam in the police station recognized it was the guys from Tivoli who went up with, uh, by that time, a mass includes to like eight trucks with men, they, they, they put a, a, a white sheet on the, in the window. So the, the guys led by Kennedy Boudoir, um played a major role in doing the mopping up. And then subsequently they went to, to St. George on that same morning. Yeah. G guys, again, we're talking, uh, I'm getting a little feedback. Guys, we're talking about the revolution we're talking about grenada and today marked the 28 the 38th anniversary to date of that bloody incident that uh, took the life of the then prime minister maurice bishop and we understand in trying to understand put it into perspective what occurred during this time right 
Um, and of course, we have Mr. Uh, Livingston Nelson, who I deem as a historian. He understands this thing so so well, um, and is able to articulate the chrono in chronological order what 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 transpired. Um, give us some recollection, Livingston, on the day, right? On the day, what happened? What was um, what what transpired? What was the day like? What was the whole revolution, the takeover like? And we also know about some announcement that was made on the station. What was the mindset of the people? Were the people in Grenada um, supportive of, of, of the revolution on that day? And what was the general mindset of the people during that, during that revolution, uh, during that takeover? Well, let us, let us take into consideration the whole idea of the radicalization and the lifting of the consciousness. By that time, Rastafarianism were coming in, had come in into Grenada. And you had a lot of the um, reggae music, um, again lifting that level of consciousness and um by that time it was seen that the main players um the main player uh or the main player was maurice bishop so on that morning people they were joyful they were happy they were people were jubilant excited people felt that there was something new coming that would appeal to them because what what people felt was now we're going to throw away the reign of, of imperialism or colonialism. Um, we were going to be free. We were going to have education. Remember in the Tivoli area, we already had um, night school, which preceded as a CCP. And people wanted to go into um, cooperatives and use agro-processing and expand on that whole thing to enrich the nation. So Grenadians bought into that. That is what that revolution was all about. And people um, embraced the revolution. And so on March 13th, it was such an exciting uh, feeling that, you know, a real exciting feeling for Grenadians that, yes, we are going to, um, we are liberating Grenada. We are liberating Grenada. No longer um, a, a one set of people, but everybody is going to, share in that pie and the pie is going to be larger than ever bigger than ever so it was a really glorious day of course there was a cross-section of the populace that had fear and, and you know trepidation over what took place some people were extremely frightened because it's about the dairy and people were wondering if there would be revenge and revenge killing people would wonder you know if um because the mother was unknown dairy because it was easy to know if the mother or parents were unknown dairy if the young upstarts, the young revolutionaries were going to come to kill them. So yes, people were, there were people that had that fear. Um, but as I say, all in all, Grenadians embraced that, the, particularly the youthful population, and saw them being a part of that new Grenada that they would want to forge for themselves and, be, and you know, walk tirelessly for, or, or even die for, on that morning. So March 13th um, was a very, exciting and glorious sun would you say would you say that would you say that it was they felt liberated people felt liberated a lot of persons as i said while there was a section that had the fear but by and large a large number of religions felt liberated they felt that um yes um what mind you a lot of persons were not aware but as they weighed on and people recognized what was taking place people felt liberated that people joined a lot of persons that had no intention of being in the army or listening or following me, Boris Bishop, know that it happened. They accepted it and, and, and they joined. They joined in the struggle. So if not more, not physically, somebody morally give give it to the revolution struggle. Yeah. What was the plan uh, or the promise to folks like Kennedy and the folks in Tivoli? Well, let me just say <laughs> that, that um, well, <laughs> anyway, let, 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 I, I would come to that. But let me say, Morris and the revolution became the big no for the black oppressed people all over the world. The revolution in my mind was no longer a Grenadian phenomenon. It, it, it encapsulated all the vices and voices of the struggling people, particularly in other things in Africa. So um, for persons that were part of that, it was about having a place. Um, and, and, and even though at that time it was not spoken, it, 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 it was felt and people 
who would say it on their own, let those who labor hold their in. Um, we all would, 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 would benefit. Those who work hard would, would, would be rewarded. And so the people like Kennedy Boudlard or, or, or the Teddy Victor, who, who, who as I said, um, were estranged from the revolution or the revolutionary process during that time, he joined on that day, expecting to again be forgiven and play a, a, a new role in the new structure, in the new revolutionary, the new revolutionary Grenada. But as I said, from very early class, the persons that fought, the main fighters were marginalized, ostracized in no time at all, very, very quickly. But on that day, and in the first maybe month or so of the revolution, I mean, I remember you had people like Super Emmanuel Charles coming from Antigua, um, and, and again, a guy from Tivoli. He, he, he went up to train undercover. He came back to Grenada days after, and he led the first parade in Queen's Park. Um, he was the one that was dealing with weapons before persons was able to go to Cuba and train, etc. So people felt that it was part of that, and people were ready to give up. But everybody expected, let those who labor hold the reign. People really believed in that. So it was not just Kennedy Buddha, it was same with James Harry, Teddy Victor, um, Emmanuel Charles, Chicken Hawk, um, Ralphie on, on, on the Caradage, um, Strong Philip, all those persons that put their life on the line expecting something to emerge. Rastanana, who um, again was one of the bodyguard bishop, one of Bishop Oli bodyguard because he was a martial art artist. He too, all of them had that aspiration um, that marijuana would be partly liberating. We would have an election, we would win, you know, marijuana would be there, you could, you could smoke a spliff right there, you know, and, and so a lot of persons come with their own hope and aspiration. As I said, it was a whole um, potpourri of, 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 of voices and struggle and people wanting to be part of that. And everybody come with their own um, aim and own expectation, thinking that the revolution would encompass the belief that it is in Right. So we up to we up to the overthrow or the takeover, the day of March 13th, where the police station was, was taken over by the the the, 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 the new regime. Uh, we have the guys from Tivoli who played a very integral role in the whole takeover. We have a new government, a new revolutionary government. Those the government was instilled not by the ballot box. They were they they took over. It was a revolution. They took over power. How was the outside wall now seeing Grenada? Because you know, more America and other places, if it's not if it's not by the ballot, they sometimes do very apprehensive about even working with revolutionary type government. How was America seeing Grenada at this particular time, knowing that it was not election by the ballot box? Well, America um extremely apprehensive. Now you have a, a young, a small island in the Caribbean, mainly black people. And those persons took control of the country by the bullet. America made concern would be would um the main concern has always been um are these persons going to be aligned to us? Are they going to be aligned to our next foreign power? Um, what was the basis for the takeover? Where you know, so America was a watch and seek, and of course, in no time the revolution start expressing um, equality, equality of opportunity, which is in nature socialism. Um, the revolution start talking about Maurice Bishop on his on the promised election, but also they were talking about plans to nationalize and to um, open up the education process and. Um, bring more better med, med, um, health care, etc., etc. A lot of promises and agro processing. Um, I, I'm not so sure America is always happy to hear those kind of development plans. So in my mind, I think they were always apprehensive. But the, the world, the black world in particular, the Caribbean, look to Grenada with, with, with a sense of admiration. African countries, um, as far as the apartheid system, if Grenada, a small island, can throw over, a, 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 you know, um, the colonial master, we can can redouble our effort. So Grenada became a real motivation. And 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 before I forget to say, because I tend to say that later on, Grenada has moved from a Grenada revolution to a Caribbean revolution 
to an international revolution. The revolution was not just for us in Grenada. The, 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 the revolution was bought. The revolution was accepted by a large number of persons struggling in other parts of the world. So while America was apprehensive, um, some of the European countries and the partners and England, etc., were hesitant to, you know, to pick on little Grenada so quickly. So if you recognize England had companies like Plessy that took part in helping with the airport, and you had England that, that, that didn't really come in in the invasion, etc. They felt that this small island didn't warrant this kind of geopolitics um, playing out with them. So um, Grenada had won the sympathy of a lot of persons in the early days in particular of the revolution. And people wanted to give Grenada a chance to see where they were going and what they were doing. Yeah, I want to play back a piece of a speech from Maurice Bishop as Prime Minister of Grenada um, after he traveled to the United States. Take a look at this quick video right here. Our people understand the value and the benefit of free secondary education because they know now that once their children are able to pass the common entrance exam and get into secondary school, they no longer have to worry about finding those keys, which as you know, for agricultural workers, for example, were very often impossible. But not just free secondary education, but in effect, free university education. <laughs> Moving from a situation before the revolution, where in the last year of Gary, 1978, just three people went abroad on university scholarships. And they happened to be Gary's daughter and one of his other minister's daughter. <laughs> Moving from that situation, in the first six months of the revolution, 109 students were able to go abroad on three university scholarships. Our people are more and more getting to understand what we mean when we say that education to us is liberation. <laughs> that education is a strategic concern of this government. That is why that this year, 1982, is the year we have named the year of political and academic education because we understand the importance of bringing education to our people. Following the establishment of the Center for Popular Education program in early 1980, within one year of the work of the CPE program, the illiteracy figure in Grenada was reduced to 2% of the entire population. The people understand that in areas, in all areas of their basic needs, real attempts are being made to solve these problems. Two and a half million gallons more of water, pipe bone water, are flowing into the homes of our Grenadians at this time. Before the revolution, under 30% of all homes had portable water. The people understand what it means when electrification is brought to their village. The people understand what it means when they know that by the end, the middle of next year, we would have doubled the electricity output and capacity in our country. And therefore, more people would have the possibility of electricity. Our people, therefore, sisters and brothers, have a greater and deeper understanding of what the revolution means and what it has brought to them. They certainly understand very, very clearly that when some people attack us on the ground of human rights, when some people attack us on the ground of constituting a threat to the national security of other countries, our people understand that is foolishness 
They know the real reason has to do with the fact of the revolution and the benefits that the revolution are bringing to the people of our country. Let me start, let's stop there and let's get in a little bit as it relates to the benefits of the revolution. But before we before we take your, your answer as to the benefit that the revolution brought his people, we have a caller online. Caller your life, go right ahead. Good night, Junior. Hey. Uh, this is Elias Gilmore. Good night, Livingston. My brother. Good night. Uh, Livingston, I also want to tell you, you is a man I have a lot of respect for because of the work you do with the Tivoli drummers and the and the Tivoli community. And you're serious about I work with you already. And you're serious, serious about what you do. And I also follow your program every time, the way you speak and everything. Well educated and plus two sass men. Um, yeah. Before before I uh, ask my question, Junior, mm -hmm. I just want the audience to know that I is one of them, Mr. Elimus Gilbert, who survived from the food. Um, who survived or almost lost my life, but I'm here today. I uh, was in Form 1 in SAS when the Belma girl came up and get us with um, the student from St. Joseph Convent with her tie, her, her wrong, her waist chanting, be for bishop, be for better men, see for coach, see for communists. I end up on a PTS bus, pass over the hills and end up in town at school boy drive the bus. I was in the market. I went up to Bishop House when they free him. I saw when he was on the truck. I went back to the market and I ended up on the food. I spent about 10 minutes on the food. And uh, something tell me get out of here. As I turn my back, the bullets start. I lie down on that truck, school children on top of me. I run for my life. Yeah, I run for my life. So I survive. I, um, I follow this thing all my life. I is one of them that wanted the Grenada 17 to hang bad. With no apology. As I get older, I start thinking different. I read a lot and I follow what happened. My opinion, I don't think them guys wake up the morning and say we kill him bishop today. I think things get out of hand and the biggest mistake they make, the biggest mistake that the, the, the central committee makes is putting a sitting prime minister on the house arrest. Let me understand the question to you now. And answer me honestly. A lot of people think that the holiday should be on the 19th today and not the 25th. No, I personally disagree with that. I think we Grenadians, I don't say me and you, because we did not kill anybody, but it's Grenadians. We make the mess. We Grenadians make the mess on the 19th, then came the 25th. We make the mess for ourselves on the 19th, and then came the 25th. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much, Inspector. Um, yeah. The, and, and just for clarification, for those of, for, for those of you who are watching, the 25th you're speaking about is when uh, the invasion, that's when the U.S. forces came in. Uh, the 19th is the day today that Maurice Bishop was, was assassinated. Um, now, the 25th in Grenada is known as Thanksgiving. So people are saying that they shouldn't have Thanksgiving when the American came. It should not be celebrated at that time. So, to, to as the reference, to, to Specky's question, Livingston. Yes, yeah, Specky, you put, you, you put me in a real monkey pants on Specky. You shouldn't be doing that to me. We should be <laughs> friends. <laughs> <laughs> because this one is not really an easy one. Let me just say on it because I, I wanted us to talk about the 19 i thought we were coming into that yeah we're coming into that you cannot, you cannot jump the gun a little bit so you could if you want you could hold it for them because we, we haven't really reached there yet so specky i would answer your question when we reach there right right, right. We don't reach there yes 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 we, we don't reach there yet so yes so so we were at the emergency uprising with the revolution the takeover the mindset of the Grenadian people at that point in time was, yeah, they felt liberated. They felt, yeah. Did in the first, say, first hundred days of the revolution, did, did you think that the revolutionary, the, the government, 
made 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 the mark of the people. What well, the people were still supportive or as supportive in the first hundred days of the revolution? Did they do what they said that they were going to do? Um, no, they 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 started back backpedaling. Um, let me just say they started backpedaling. Um, as a, the, the first move that showed that things um, were not going as planned was the marginalization of what I consider to be some of the key fighters, some of the persons that led the struggle. Um, they were marginalized. So persons that were never in the forefront in any of the um, military escapade, those persons now emerge, immediately emerge as, um, as, as executive members and as... as, as, as um, officers in the army you know some of them had never probably publicly held a gun they, they were there now um but let me say we had, so the revolution was in march right we had yeah. april may so, so by october by october the 15th 1979 20 persons were arrested for a plot to overthrow the government and the persons happened to be people like james Harry, the same teddy victor who was the founder of 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 of, of um, Jewel and by by the New Jewel movement, um, Winston White, um, and Winston White, and I want to put it in perspective because Winston White White ran on um, on a platform together with uh, on uh, they call the Alliance together with Maurice etc. Winston White, um, James Harry is the one that was um, 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 Fort Villa up in Sutter's. Um, Jim Terry was in charge of that. And you had persons like Ras Nanan. Um, those persons, they were arrested by, I mean, a couple months in the revolution. So the revolution, they were, they were arrested. Um, are you hearing me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. I say, yeah. So those persons were arrested um, in, in, in a short space of time. So the revolution started to show signs where. The aspirations of some of the persons that were there that was hoping for something immediately they start to show that we're now going to start to um put some heavy manners on some of the persons coincidentally accidentally most of those persons that were arrested were persons that had a genuine love and affection or feeling for maurice bishop and those persons were ostracized or marginalized um so that 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 you use 100 days but i'm just showing you what what started taking place uh -huh. soon after so first you had the persons that were implanted a core group of persons that were part of oral um that become on the leadership of, of the party and the other group of persons although they would not be leader they were arrested marginalized or or, or just relegated to to play non-essential role during that time so things started going downhill and then you start having um Later on, um, the development of Hopeville, um, the, and, and, and to me, that is the, probably the most painful um, development in our history. You know, the development of pain, um, of, 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 of Hopeville, and, and the, it, what I would call the excessiveness being shown by the arresting of so many persons, and some of them were just, I mean, non-essential persons that played little or no, or had no, or no threat at all spent two years, three years in the prison, all because um, somebody had a gun wielding power and immediately they felt that they should exercise that power. So um, the revolution started falling out of grace. Mind you, while all that is taking place, we cannot you know, condemn the whole revolution because the revolution, particularly in the very early stage, excited the imaginations of Canadians. The, the, you know, people from all walks of life even from outside, wanting to be part of that experiment. And a, a large number of Grenadians were not aware of what was taking place, still wanted to contribute fully, um, fully um, to, to the process of, of the revolution. So um, because the language, the new, um, the, 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 the language was new example. Um, when we say, let, 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 let me look at, let me see if I, I see anything in forward ever, backward never. Um, that was a very good saying for, for persons. People bought into that kind of 
cliche. Don't with imperialism. Let those who labor holy ring. Grow what you eat and eat what you grow. Land for the landless. Free milk in school. Um, free medical care. Scholarships. Dental and um, um, optical services. Um, free uniforms. Um, scholarship to all parts of the world. So, right. so there was a lot of things that was happening simultaneously that was good. The, the, the NIS, the formation of um, uh, the agro-processing plant, those kind of moves to, to help um, consolidate our independence were, 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 were great moves. But at the right. same time, the revolution was heading to what I refer to as a collision pact. Some people speak of Hopevale, Hopevale and, and the concentration camp where Rastas was put there. We had Dennis Charles who was on the program a couple of years ago and he talked about, he spoke about, he was he being arrested and tortured. He spoke about people that, that have been, um, you know, they, 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 there was abuse physically, mentally, people that were shot and shot at and just lack of for no particular reason. Those are some of the very bad and negative things of the revolution. As, and as you rightfully said, that there were also good things like grow what you eat, land for the landless, things that was moving in the positive direction. Were the bad overweighing the good? Or 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 was it was it a balance of the good and the bad? Because I, I also heard, right, correct me if I'm wrong, that there were jail people that any anyone that spoke out and said that they are or anybody that thought of to be not supportive of the government of the 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 revolutionary government they were seen as um counter revolutionary and they would just by just by the thought that somebody would think that that person is not a part of the party then boom they'll go and arrest them they'll go and lock them up no due process nothing 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 at all it was a bad overweight in the good in in the in, in the early in the early days of the revolution um maybe not in the early days of the revolution but um as i said the revolution was on a collision path and we would look into that a little bit later but when we mentioned you know, some of the bad things i mentioned some of the good things guys so we know we're looking at some of the bad things that took place um adult suffrage was it, it was suspended freedom of thought on radio television you couldn't go and uh, and print um you couldn't go on any of those mediums and express anything negative about the revolution. The constitution was suspended and in its place, we had, um, of course, the people's law. Um, torture was rampant. Um, Strand Felix that led the attack on the Tubular Barrack was executed within minutes of the June 19 bomb, only to later on find that um, he was never a part of that, of, of that bomb blast. But a, a, a court, it seemed, was set up and within two minutes, while Morris was making his, his, his speech following that, um, bullets were heard um, executing um, Sean Phillip. Um, the Grenadian boys were shot down, and people like Lloyd Noel, Leslie Pierre, Tillman Thomas, etc. Um, yeah. Those persons, yeah, thing. Um, the PRG, as we mentioned, the PRG developed a mass camp, we mentioned Hopeville. And yeah. by the end of the term, 3,112 persons were detained for mainly frivolous and what I would consider to be chumped up charges. I, I saw a guy named Tower, um, tall guy. I don't know if anybody knows Tower. Tower, um, yeah, Tower had relatives in Tivoli. He came to Tivoli and he was asking me what's going on because, of course, we organized a demonstration in Tivoli and so we were resisting the, the government. And Tawa came up to see what happened. So while you know, they, they came with the trucks and they had a kind of counter um, demonstration against us in, in Tivoli, and they set up machine gun in the past, etc. And while Tawa was asking, well, what's going on, what's happening, um, etc., he just inquiring with his, he came from work and he just came to Tivoli. They gave Tawa a marijuana tree and Tawa was placed on one of those yellow China trucks. Tawa served close to three years in jail. Uh -huh. And we have similar cases of those things happening. We have cases of whereby one soldier like another woman and they just arrest the, 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 the boyfriend that she was seeing. Um, right. You know, I mean, so there were a lot of frivolous and chumped up charges and there was no check and balance. Yeah. Um, so later on, not at the beginning, but as I said, later on, the fact that we had to put a prime minister against a wall um, with some of his other men and execute him. An order was given to execute the prime minister, and, yeah. and I would I, I would I would come to that because I would want to say 
and I would want to narrow it to who probably could give that, that order. Because not any anybody could order an execution on a prime minister. That doesn't, you can't do that. So, so things, fall apart. things start to fall apart. Yeah. People started to, people internally just started to feel like they too should get a hold of power or get a chance at power or, or get an opportunity to lead. What was the, from your understanding, what, 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 why did that whole relationship change between what was then a group of people who wanted to overthrow Gary to make it better to, for the for the betterment of the of the country, a group, and they all together? What, why the fraction? Why the 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 the, the division? And what caused the division in in the different factions in within the government? Well, as I explained earlier on, there was a lot of persons with different agendas, different aspirations. The Rastals had the agenda, other persons had the agenda, and they wanted to see things happen in a particular way. I also mentioned on the international and regional scene, Grenada had no position itself as this beacon of hope for the oppressed persons all over the world, in Africa, in the Caribbean. So the revolution was no longer just about Grenada here, it was about that. But within the bowels of the revolution, there was a group of persons started way back in Orel who saw the struggle not about the inclusion of rastas and what it considered to be stupid ideas or about, about religion and culture. They wanted to see a Marxist-Leninism um, party develop on strict discipline. So any departure from that was seen as petty bourgeois or bourgeois tendency. And so Morris, who was trying to embrace all the aspirations and agenda of the persons, was then castigated, demonized by those on, on the other side, or the other power base, that, 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 that saw there was only one path. Those persons become extremely inflexible. There was only one path, and that one path had to be Marxism, Leninism. And anytime there was a breakdown, a, a, a problem that was facing in the country, it had to be because we lack Leninism discipline. So more discipline. The party, the leadership of the party, the, the party bureau members, some of them stay two and three years before they can apply to be a member, before they can become a member. The, 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 the number of persons that actually were members of the party was extremely small. Those persons, in order to be officers, a decision was taken, they had to be hardcore Leninism, Marxism, Marxism, Leninism, Marxism, Marxism. Leninism, that is right. um, theories. So those persons had to be that. So there was this inside group led by Bernard Cohn who insisted on that. For a matter of fact, let me just say in 1982, September 1982, when Bernard Cohn resigned uh, as party and strategist, but he never resigned as deputy political leader. First, he was the only person of any worth through all the whole revolution era to ever resign and come back. Mm -hmm. All those that resign and try to come back, they were jailed or killed. Nobody else of any word were able to step out. They couldn't step out and come back in. Only Bernard Code. So secondly, when Bernard Code resigned, he said um, he resigned. And at the same time, which, uh, we're treating, they were at the same time, which was really extremely strategic. The day Bernard Code resigned, the day Kenrick Radix was thrown out from the, polit from the executive of the party, the Politburo. But at the same time, it's the same day where um, three of the so-called apostles, right? Three of the so-called apostles, um, um, people like James um, Ventu, um, Len, James, and Ventu, those three persons became full-fledged members of the Politburo. So Bernard resigned, Kenrick was kicked out, and three other apostles, apostles, who were very supportive of Bernard, then were elevated to position. Right. Right. And and so Bernard, in his resignation, state, when um, I am moving out because I want peace, I am moving out because you expect me, Bernard, to be the one that have to manage others that does not show strict Leninist discipline. And when some persons are in high position and they do not want to follow, you expect only me. I am right. resigning, and when you're ready for me, when you are ready to manage those that do not follow strict Leninism, then I'm ready to come back. Right. So that was fast. 
let me just say this really quickly guys we have a 730 obligation um that has to run on the platform um so i want to break up this in two parts i want to jump kind of briefly and just a quick synopsis of um uh, october 19th right and see if we could reconvene in ex an extended conversation on the 25th if you are available and of course we'll bring in some other panelists as well uh but we do have a 7 30 obligation it's 10 minutes before that time frame it's very important that we join that obligation in about eight minutes or so so let's move into october 19th and what transpired on that day well <clears throat> october 19th as i said um the, the Central Committee met and they asked for um, Maurice to accept joint leadership. Um, Maurice originally said yes. There was a meeting, it seemed, they say, of frankness, etc. frank discussion. Um, and those guys and them um, uh, um, explained to Maurice that he is weak, uh, he's ill disciplined, um, etc. For a matter of fact, at one of those meetings, one of those um, key members asked him to shut up. Um, in consideration, he said he would consider it. Um, most likely, yes, he would work with it. And then he traveled to Hungary. Um, eventually, he came back to Cuba, landed in Grenada. Um, and they had a, a, a final meeting. And Maurice, <laughs> Maurice changed his mind. <laughs> he changed his mind on joint leadership. And when he changed his mind, that was not acceptable. So when he changed his mind, the person, he got arrested. So then now you come the tricky part. Now, two persons, and the CCC don't really ask you whether you want to go in jail or not. The CCC does not ask you what you may or may not want to do. When the CCC say, when the CCC said that you must do that, it is obvious that you have to follow that rule. So the person that was in charge now, since that it was a proposal for joint leadership, and Bernard accepts the position of, the, of joint leadership since that he had an intention of traveling, but now, since that he was asked to come back and be a joint leader, he, he fully would serve based on the wish of the people. Um, so the fact that Maurice said no, the fact that Maurice was arrested, put on the house arrest, um, it meant that there was only one person in charge, and the one person in charge was, was Bernard Code. Right. So Bernard right. Code. So Bernard Code, um, the guys again, based on the, the method of, of, of operating, um they took most of the others from bernard but bernard is never seen in the public giving those others bernard has always been elusive um he was never there for matter of fact i read um um i can't remember the first one of the first book he wrote and bernard bernard accounts to me was extremely extremely um embarrassing that after years of spending time in jail he came out and said that uh, maurice died through um crossfire and I thought that was extremely, extremely um, embarrassing for somebody of that stature and what to be making such a comment. So on the 19th, um, when uh, Specky was saying he was, people went to free Morris, um, a, deci a decision was taken. Eventually, a fast track and everything we told was all yeah. taken. A decision yeah. was taken that um, the revolutionaries had to die. There was a lot of things that happened prior to that. I mean, uh, the militia throughout. Um, in 1982, over 10,000 Grenadians had weapons at the various through all the country. By 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 October by um, October 20 by October 18th, um, there were less than 500 guns outside. Um, so there was a mopping up action that was taking place. Um, the Morris Special Squad or security personnel were changed. A new group of persons led by Abdullah took charge. Abdullah was sent from Karaku, just came out from Cuba and trained abdullah went to um, was sent to Kariku. abdullah was sent from 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 Kariku to come and and take charge of of maurice personal security abdullah is the one that was always advocating for martial law in grenada and several of the decision was that um no longer is one manism is 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 the cc is the central committee that rule um and so when the central committee took a decision it had to be carried out there was no question about about that so some of even the persons that were the trigger happy trigger, trigger guys were told that they had to and they couldn't fail in, in, in executing Morris. So Morris, that decision to execute Morris was done, was systematically 
โดนลองใจมาโก้วันนี้ไอ้ชมาตาฟากินนี่เซมบุกรุดมาบนอักูดที่เลเบนมอริสวิทเพตติบูชาเทนเดนซีบิคัสมอริสไลค์วูเมนและที่สมุกและชมาตาฟากินพลาสต์ลายเซนจ์ชอว์คอมมิชชั่นมอริสกูนุสมุกอินามิตินไม่น่าว่าอีฟ้าว่าอินามิตินอะไรก็ได้ยินสมุกแต่ที่พลาสต์ที่ลอดที่แค่นั้นสมุกแต่ทั้งสิ่งทั้งสิ่งทั้งสิ่งที่เกิดขึ้นมาที่มอริสถูกดีมอนไซน์และทำให้เขาเกิดความรู้สึกว่าเขาไม่ถูกต้องอีกว่าเขาไม่ได้รับความสุขอะไรเขาเป็นคนปกติอย่างเดียวดังนั้นเขาไม่สามารถเลือกใครได้ทุกคนได้รับความสุขและเขาไม่มีอำนาจในการเลือกตั้งดังนั้นเขาต้องถูกปกติของ CCC และดังนั้นในเดือนตุลาคมนี้ในเดือนตุลาคมนี้ในเดือนตุลาคมนี้ในเดือนตุลาคมนี้ในเดือนตุลาคมนี้ในเดือนตุลาคมนี้ในเดือนตุลาคมนี้ในเดือนตุลาคมนี้ในเดือนตุลาคมนี้ในเดือนตุลาคมนี้ในเดือนตุลาคม It was executed because only one person could give an execution to execute a leader. Um, when Charles Taylor took over from Liberia, Liberia, um, he gave the order um, because he was going to be in charge. You do not execute a leader if you do not have somebody else to take over. Please, right. You, you said... And, and one last thing, six days, six days. Mm -hmm. you right. Know, um, if he died in crossfire, six days a, a leader, a political leader died. And not one time there was a bulletin for the arrest or information leading to the arrest of anybody that committed that crime. Yeah. You know, in the next conversation that we're going to have, I want to talk about who pulled that trigger. Who gave the orders? Because you said the Central Committee was making the decision. And the Central Committee, I believe, was headed by the military leader. Correct me if I'm wrong. H.A., right? No, man. It, it wasn't? No, H.A. couldn't. H.A. H.A. was like the governor general. No. H.A. <laughs> was most ceremonial as far as I could. So. Right. But well, we 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 will talk more about about it. But I wanna I wanna I wanna I wanna, I wanna dedicate the next conversation whenever we have it again. Um, on who gave that order to shoot and who actually pulled that trigger. It's a. Uh, um and yeah uh are you hearing me i think i lost audio oh no i'm good I mean, yeah um nelson i, I want to say thank you so much i want to say thank you so much I, I i don't mean to rush you on that but my obligation is in is in two minutes and um i want us to i want us to be able to to continue this conversation more lengthy on the next on a, on a part two going forward and we're going to talk about specky's question uh and and also everything else surrounding the march 13th and also sorry not march 13th no october october 19th and october 25th on the 25th we'll, we'll have part two of the discussion um livingston nelson thank you my brother we'll keep in touch any last words before we go i think uh, i've said a lot um I, I was hoping for more persons to chime in but i guess um because I, I like to be challenged i like my position to be challenged um so i guess next time yes 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 absolutely absolutely we, we will we will uh and again if you're available on the 25th we will have a continuation of this conversation livingston nelson thank you so much my brother we'll keep in touch all right, all right. Tivoli, Tivoli. inspector is coming your way yeah guys I, i'm sorry to rush this last part of it but i promise you on the 25th we'll have a part two of this discussion with livingston nelson if he's still available i know he's very busy uh but we'll have other other the days leading up to and the day off right october 19 to october 25th and the significance of those dates what actually transpired thanks for watching guys thanks for being a part of our program We'll keep in touch, all right? Good night. It was the Jones, the Jones, that had them jumping. It was the Jones, the Jones, that Freddy read him. It was the Jones, the Jones, that had them sweating. Question? Who are we? 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 I say, who are we? Teachers, women, school children, but they don't feel the rhythm. 